Hello and welcome to my channel So Amelia where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to this week's video, a different one for me this week, it's a sew along so I hope you'll stick around and join me to see what I get up to and make this week. So recently I've been inspired by a few dresses on the high street, particularly from a couple of my favourite designer brands, and I wanted to incorporate a couple of these different features like big ruffly sleeves and pie crust collars into my own dress. Now as the basis of my dress I decided to use the Bakerloo dress pattern by Nina Lee. This is a favourite pattern of mine, I have made a few Bakerloo dresses already and I just love the large statement collar. Now the Bakerloo dress is a smock style dress. It comes in two size bands, sizes 6 to 20 and 16 to 28. So it starts at a size 6, which is a bust of 32 inches, a waist of 24 inches, and hips of 35.5 inches. And size 28 is a bust of 54 inches, waist of 47 inches, and hips of 57 inches. Now for this pattern, I fall into a size 10 across the bust, 12 across the hip and a 14 across the waist. So my measurements are a bust of 36 inches, waist of 30 inches and hips of 41 inches. However, I have always made the size 10. I find that that fits just fine because it's a smock dress. There is enough wiggle room in the waist and the hips to just make a straight size 10. However, this time I knew I wanted the top to fit just a little more snugly. So I decided to make a few adjustments to the pattern pieces. The first thing I did was to cut the skirt in two pieces rather than one piece as you normally do for the back skirt piece. So the front skirt I cut as one piece on the fold but I cut two back skirt pieces. This was so I could make an invisible zipper going right through the back bodice and into the top of the skirt just so that I could get in and out of the dress a little more easily. The second thing I decided to do with this particular fabric was to line it. Now this is a lovely corduroy fabric, it's beautiful and soft, but I was just worried it would cling to my tights a little bit, especially when I wear it in the winter months. And so I decided to line it with a static free lining that I got from Minerva. The corduroy itself I bought from Beyond the Pink Door and I just love the colour and the softness of this. So I also chose to add a different collar. I didn't want to add the beautiful big collar of the Bakerloo that you normally add, instead I wanted to add a pie crust collar and I used the tutorial that I found on Rosary Apparel. She's a fellow YouTuber and I will link her channel below where she makes a dress very similar to this one if you would like the measurements for the ruffle collar. The other thing I knew I wanted to do was make this less of a knee length dress and make it more of a midi length dress. So I did lengthen the skirt pattern piece by 4 inches just to give me a little bit of extra length. I also only hemmed it up by about half an inch just to give me the length that I wanted for this particular pattern. The final thing I did for this dress was to use a free sleeve template again on the Rosary Apparel website and that was just to give the puffed sleeve which was the look that I was going for. It's a very full balloon sleeve as you'll see in the video and I decided to finish the sleeve off with elastic at the cuff. I really enjoyed making this dress and I really hope that you enjoy watching the sew along. So without further ado, let's get into it. I started by cutting out all of the pattern pieces for the main and the lining fabric. Then I marked the darts on the main fabric using my friction marking pin and then once I had finished marking those I pinned them into place and I repeated this process for the lining fabric. Then I took both the lining and the main bodice to the machine and sewed the darts into place. I pressed the darts carefully towards the bottom of the bodice. I then took the back and front bodice pieces, joining them at the shoulders and the side seams. I pinned these into place before sewing them up at the machine. I overlocked the raw edges and then gave the bodice a good press. While I had the red thread on my overlocker, I decided to go ahead and finish the edges on my skirt pieces and my sleeve pieces. I then went ahead and added the gathering stitches to the top of each sleeve. The next step was to sew up the ruffle. I matched the short ends of that ruffle piece, pinning them and sewing them 
before pressing them out and overlocking the long edge. I put gathering stitches in the long end of the ruffle before pinning it and basting it onto the main bodice piece. I overlocked the bodice edges and put the main bodice aside for now. Next I turned my attention to the skirt. I overlocked the pocket pieces before pinning them in place onto the main skirt at the notches that are on the pattern. I then sewed those pockets into place and pressed them out, stitching over the seam allowance so that they lie really flat when the skirt is being worn. I then pinned the side seams of the skirt before sewing the side seams and the pocket pieces into place. I gave the skirt a good press before turning to the lining. Like with the main fabric, I lined up the bodice pieces at the shoulder and the side seams and sewed those together before pinning and sewing the skirt lining together. It was at this point that I also decided to sew in my label. Sewing is my self care. I gave the skirt lining a good press and got ready for the next step, which is all the gathering. I sewed two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of the skirt. I then drew up those gathering threads and pinned the skirt piece to the bodice piece, making sure to match up the side seams and the back seams. I then repeated this process for the skirt lining. I sewed the skirt and bodice pieces together, removed the gathering threads, and then gave everything a good press. Next, I needed to attach the lining to the bodice at the neck. I pinned both pieces into place, making sure the ruffle was sandwiched in between the lining and the main fabric. I sewed the neckline, going very slowly as there were a lot of layers of fabric to sew through here with that ruffle in the middle. I then clipped the curves around the neckline before giving the ruffle and the bodice a good press. Finally, I top stitched the ruffle into place. Next it was time to insert the invisible zip. I always follow a tutorial for this from Guthrie and Garni and I'll link that in the description box below. I started by pinning the zip to the top of the bodice, working just on the main bodice piece. I'll sew in the lining later. I sewed the zip into place and then gave the back bodice seam a good press. Then I finished off the back seam. I pinned it, starting from where the zip finished, down to the bottom hem of the skirt. I repeated this process for the lining fabric too. I sewed up the back seam, stopping at the bottom of the invisible zipper and checking to make sure that I had a nice clean finish on my back seam. I flipped the lining of my bodice over to the other side so that the right sides were now facing. I then pinned this to the zipper and sewed down the seam to attach the lining to the bodice. I trimmed the corners before turning out the garment. And giving the zip a good press. And that's the main part of the dress done. Now onto the sleeves. I pinned and sewed the sleeve seams together before giving them a good press. I pressed and pinned the sleeve hem 
Sewing this up at the machine and ensuring to leave a small gap so that I could feed the elastic through. I fed the elastic through this channel and hand sewed the ends of the elastic closed. I then sewed the opening on the sleeve hem closed to encase the elastic in the hem of the sleeve. I drew up the gathers on the sleeve heads and then I attached those to the bodice main fabric making sure not to catch any of the lining when I sewed these into place. Once sewn, I used my tailor's hem to give the sleeves a light press. I then folded under the lining by 3 8 of an inch and pressed that as well. I pinned the lining to the sleeve seam And then for a really neat finish, I hand sewed the lining down. The final step was to hem the skirt. And with that, my Bakerloo dress hack was done. so much for watching today if you've managed to get to the end of the sew along. If you did enjoy it please do leave me a comment below and let me know so that I can make more sew alongs if that's something that you're interested in watching. I so appreciate those of you who have subscribed, it's amazing to have hit 3,000 subscribers, I'm so excited and I'm really appreciative of all of you who come back and watch week after week. And for those of you who leave me such lovely comments, it's so much fun having conversations with you in the comments, so do drop me a comment below if you enjoyed watching today's video. It would also be great if you would hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you can be notified when I publish future content that hopefully you will also enjoy. So again, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you have a great week full of happy sewing and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.